asking myself and uh, Mickey before the start of the game about how little the Leicester team has changed. They spent a lot of money, but they basically played. And we were talking about the players who may or may not have been instrumental. I mean, I mean, in the organisation of the dismissal of their manager. And I thought it would be instructive with a professional player here with me. And we're not trying to slaughter any individuals, but they, they, they all need to front up here because somebody's been sacked. These are the players who I think it's fair to say have featured a lot last season and this, sort of the, the, in the two different kinds of seasons that Leicester have had. Peter Schmeichel in goal, sorry, Casper Schmeichel yeah. in goal. The back four is almost ever present. Simpson, Morgan, Huth and Fuchs. The midfielders, I mean, obviously Kante is gone, so we've got Mark Albrighton, Drinkwater, Riyad Mahrez. Then you've got Vardy and Okazaki, really. Let's just talk about these players. Who deserves uh, to, uh, who's earning their big new contracts and who can honestly face themselves in the shaving mirror to this morning and say, well, it's not my fault that uh, Claudio Ranieri, a legend at this club, has been given, uh, summarily given the tin tack. I'll start at the back with Casper Michael. He's the only one. You think he's the only one? He's the only one. So yeah. he, I mean, he, he, he missed a little bit of the uh, the season, did he? And, and their form absolutely mm -hmm. dipped so much. And I think his performance the other night has kept them in this Champions League tie. The penalty save to start with, and I think there was two or three saves after that, you know, up until that point. It, I mean, it's easy to do. We always oh, it could have been five or six. People always say that, and it never is. It could have been four or five, Absolutely, though. Absolutely, yeah. It could I mean, have been. They're playing against a really a difficult, severe side who were flying high in the, the, in the, the Spanish league. The only thing I'd say about Casper is that in recent weeks, he has obviously become exasperated what's going on. Um, and I wonder how helpful it is to have your goalkeeper literally waving his arms about and screaming at everybody in but general. See, the thing that he was saying in front of cameras about them not being good enough, last season was last season, let's think about this season, things aren't going great, etc., etc. He said a lot of things. What we were speaking about before, about the players getting together in the dressing room, that's what he should be saying to his teammates, not, not in front of camera. You know, if anybody's going to say those things in front of the camera, you look at a powerful man, and who's the most powerful man at the club? Take away the chair, obviously, but mm. your manager. Your manager's the one who comes in front of the camera, because he's seeing everything that we're seeing when we're watching the games, or whether you're at the football matches, to say, it's not good enough. Our form's dipped from last season. The manager comes in front of the, in the TV cameras or on the radio station and says, look, we are not performing anywhere near what we achieved. We're not good enough. We've got to change things around. We've got to start getting better. It shouldn't be the goalkeeper, their number one goalkeeper, in front of those cameras and in, in talking to the radio, saying those things. Keep it in house and say it together. Uh, because it was your position, I'll, I'll do the two fullbacks, Simpson and Fuchs. Yeah. How they I done? mean, uh, Danny Simpson, look, last season, uh, a surprise, not just me, but hordes of people. No, I didn't think, you know, he was actually good enough to play in the Premier League, mm. first and foremost, if I'm brutally honest with you. But take nothing away from what he'd done last season. He, he was fantastic. He had a great season. Steady, determined. Yeah, he was. And he'd done, you know, as it says on the tin, defend, you stop crosses, and leave it to the forward players to go and do their job. He did it. Has he done any of that this season? No. This is why he's been left out the team on occasion. I think he's played two of the last six games. Christian Fuchs, I think he's got other distractions now. I think he's got a clothing company, which has obviously came off the back of last season as well. Is he more focused and interested in his clothing company than he is in the football? Because it, that's the way it looks to me. He certainly doesn't have an interest in getting close to his immediate opponents. I know that. Absolutely. Look, miles away. And then, look, I'm sure you're going to mention the two centre-halves now. Sure, well. and I play centre-half on Hackney Marshall. I'll have my say. I mean, look, they, they've, got, they've lost that screen mm -hmm. of, um, Kante. of Kante. But so they, what they've, they've got to do is decide they're going to play together in a different way because they've lost that screen and, they, and the people they've brought in, Mendy, etc., haven't quite covered up for him. What they can't do is, I think and you'll have to help me with this, in their own individual way, different way, they're hiding slightly. Mm. Wes Morgan now suddenly throws himself into tackles, perhaps interceptions that he thought Kanto would make last year, so he's going forward. Huth is terrified of his own lack of pace, is falling so far back. Mm -hmm. That puts a massive gap between the two of them, which any striker worth their salt. From the moment you're trained at school, you go, oh, there's the gap between the defenders, I'll yeah. go and stand there. Yeah. Plus, of course, with Huth falling back all the time, Nobody's ever offside against Leicester, no. so you can flood their penalty area knowing that you know, you don't even have to time your run. You can just jog into it because yeah. Hoot is falling further and further back. They two, they're doing the wrong things, but they're both doing the wrong thing. At least they're doing the wrong thing together. Mm. It might be better, but they're doing <laughs> the wrong thing separately. Disaster. Those two are a disaster, and he should have dropped them by now, or at least one of them, because, yeah. because he's been too loyal to those yeah, two. I don't know who they've got as replacements, but you, you, you mentioned it just before there about playing as individuals. And that's what these two centre-halves are doing, right? As last season, you know, Wes Morgan was the leader. He's the captain of the football club. 
And when you're looking at him, you're looking for him to be the organiser. Not just of his back four, but the midfield players in front of him, using that vocal voice of his to say, listen, this is where you need to be. And we've seen on so many occasions this time around, you're right, Robert Huth dropping off, Morgan trying to close down, trying, trying to play the Kante role, if you like, which is just not criminal. Not his job. Not it's his not job. his job. His job and Huth's job is to keep clean sheets, which they did on many occasions last. They were I was a fullback, Danny, and I was always taught that I, I kept my line alongside my centre-half. And I played with some very experienced centre-halves who would talk to me, Steve Bold being one at Sunderland. He was the, the best centre-half. Organise me. When I wanted a bomb forward, he would drag me back and say, you stay here. We'll win this game 1-0. We're not going to try and win this game 2-3 and three and 4-0. We're winning. You stay alongside me. I don't see that from the two full-backs of Leicester. They do their own job. The two centre-halves are doing their own job. The only one who sounds vocal to me is the goalkeeper. And Kasper Schmeichel. So the back four, if you don't get that right, you are at sixes and sevens. And that's exactly what they've been. Danny, Drinkwater has struggled without, um, uh, without Kante. Kante. Old Brighton's been in and out of the team, which takes us to the, the, the stars of last season going forward. I mean, footballs of the year and all the rest of it. Riyad Mahrez and Jamie Vardy. Yeah, a million miles away from where they were. You know, I, sa I said about having a plan B. You know, top players want to get to that next level. Yes, they won the Premier League, but it's, it, it's okay winning at once. You look at the great sides, Chelsea, Manchester United, whoever else you want to mention. But I don't expect these two to be able to take, make Leicester win the title again. No, me neither, Danny. Nor, but I, nor, I, nor does it bother me. They've got big pay rises. That's what they, their due was. But they've got to do something better than what they've... I don't care how they work it out, mm -hmm. but they've got to do something better than what they've done this season for Leicester City. I, in a manager, in an opposition dressing room, okay, when you go through the tactics, I'm sure last season they would say, look, you stop Mares and you stop Vardy, you've got a chance of winning this game. Whatever happens in midfield, whatever through balls Danny Drinkwater tries to play, whatever Kante's doing in front of the back four, if you can stop Mares and you can stop Vardy, you will win this football match, or you give yourself a great chance of winning this match. Now, this time around, they're, not, they're probably worried a little bit about them, but they're not saying, where's the threat? Where's the threat going to come from? Because they can't get in behind us now. So they're saying to the full-backs or the centre-halves, right, just give them that time and space in front of you. Let them pick the ball up and let them start running at you. Don't let them run in behind you without the ball. This is where I say they've got to come up with a plan B. And I don't think Leicester City have done that. They've played the same football that we saw last season. Everybody's worked them out. So them two players, there was, there was a stat came out. It was about seven or eight weeks ago. Mares had passed the ball to Jamie Vardy once in the whole of the season. That was about six, seven weeks ago. I mean, that was incredible. They were, they were the two players who you know, took the Premier League by storm. There's no other question for us. So Claudio Ranieri may ha have some of the blame um, because he perhaps been too loyal to players, perhaps didn't find a new way for Leicester to play when, as Mickey points out, as all good coaches will do, you start to sort out your opponents. But we just want to do that for 10 minutes because I think the Leicester City players need to take a long, hard look, hard look at themselves in the mirror. And of course, if you're a Leicester fan, those same players have now got 13 games to pick up what... Of course it was never going to be another championship winning season for them, but it's going to be a disaster unless they turn this form around. So far, they've shown no sign of doing it.